Hey everyone, we're here at the Peachtree District Championship with Team 1261, the Robo Lions. Today they're going to talk a little bit about their robot to us, and we can't wait to hear about it. Thank you. Thanks for watching Fun. This video on Fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Andy Mark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to andymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Kettering University's cutting edge programs and their experiential co-op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands-on, feature-focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. All right, we're going to pass it off to Jessica to speak a little bit about their intake. So from the start, we decided to go with a ground intake for two reasons. We wanted to help our cycle times and we wanted to be a little bit better off against defense. So we figured that by not having to go to and from the station every single time, we would shorten our cycle times. And since the, sta the stations this year are unprotected, uh, there would be suspected that there would be a lot of defense by the stations. So by having a ground intake, we could limit our contact with that kind of defense and stick closer to the reef that has that protected zone. So here's our intake. It starts up against our built-in hard stops and it comes all the way down. At the bottom, we have this set of rollers that have these small 1.65 inch wheels and that helps to kick up the coral against this polycarb plate. And then on the top, we have these two sets of rollers with Starflex wheels. This set, front set is able to come up and down along the path of these slots and is tensioned with some surgical tubing that helps it stay in this downward position, but is able to come up depending on the orientation that we want to intake coral. So by having this flexible, we're able to intake coral at any orientation. When it comes in per parallel to the intake rollers, we're able to keep this down and then have it smoothly go up. But when we're intaking more so perpendicular to the way that our shafts are running, this is able to pop up a little bit and allow for that give that allows the coral to come through. So speaking of uh, orientation and funneling, oh. um, because of the positioning of our side elevator, our intake isn't able to be perfectly centered on our robot, which, um, so to combat that, we have uh, a wedge, a wooden wedge down here, and a polycarb flap, which helps to further guide the coral into the center of our robot where the rest of our funneling is. So like here we have our indexer, our coral comes up through the intake, through these two rollers on the indexer, which is just for more direct contact, and then funnels into our end effector. And then another interesting thing about our intake is that it is able to work with algae. So when um, when our intake is um, in a more upwards orientation, we're able to wedge a piece of algae between the bumpers and the bottom of our intake, which allows the robot to both carry the algae and score it in the processor. So. Uh, just absolutely love to hear that how much iteration and work you guys went through on that intake. That is probably one of the most multifunctional mechanisms that I've seen uh, that a team has had. Did, just a quick question, when you guys were designing that, was the algae pickup intentional or is that something you kind of just figured out later? Uh, it's something we kind of figured out later. later. Um, this is our second version of the intake. It worked with the first version as well. We After we changed it, um, we thought it wasn't going to work because we switched this. Originally, this polycarb flap was belt. And so we thought because of how compliant the belts were, that's why it was able to work. And then we ended up testing it with this new one and it works even better than the first one. Thank you so much for Jessica and Sarah to talk to us about, to talk to us about a little bit about the intake and the funneling. We'll pass it off to Shang now. Right, so because of how we intake and index, we decided that an end effector design like this, that's sort of like a basket would be better than the more common design of like a claw with two wheels on the side. Um, to help with this uh, funneling process, we have a coral hard stop that basically makes it so when we intake the coral, it sits in the end effector at the same position every time so that when we lift our elevator and end effector up, it doesn't get caught on anything and it's the same every time. Um, to help with in intaking, we have this foam hard stop at the bottom, which basically makes it so our end effector sits at the same spot every time so it doesn't hit any lips or anything. And then to combat hitting lips, we have this flared out edge where basically we found that an issue with intaking was it would get caught on that lip and then we'd have to outtake it. But after flaring this, we no longer run into that issue. Um, more hard stops we have here and up here. That basically makes it so our end effector can't swing past that position and then mess up the encoder counts. And 
Um, over here, we have these uh, wheels that we use for uh, descoring the algae. Um, it's connected through our polycord belt that's run in a figure eight position to make sure that these wheels uh, run in opposite directions. And then as Sarah mentioned, we use our intake to process. Um, to score, we have a three-stage cascading elevator, which allows us to score on all four levels. And then over here and further on the back, we have two support bars that just help with stability when we're at such high positions and driving around. And then at the back here, we have this half of uh, acrylic tubing that helps to make sure that our energy chain doesn't really swing around while we're driving around and moving the elevator up at high speeds. So obviously with this design, we have a lot of moving parts. We have the intake, which is constantly being exposed onto the field up and down. This end effector actually swings under our bumper a little bit. So being, we have to be extremely careful about how we're moving our elevator and our um, end effector as well, so that our coral path, we're never getting stuck. So when we do that, we have a state machine that we run, and that state machine is constantly monitoring the positions of the arm using a can coder, the intake using a th uh, new WCP through bore, as well as the um, elevator, and making sure that they're all staying consistent and moving in the correct sequence. So you run a lot of timers, a lot of transitions in our code, just to monitor and make sure everything's moving correctly. Uh, Aiden, can you go ahead and run the intake? So yeah, as you're gonna see, um, so what happens is the, uh, the um, elevator comes up, arm swings down, and then it comes down. So everything moves in the correct sequence so that we're not getting stuck. And we also have a coral sensor here, which allows us during Auton to maintain whether or not we have coral because we run object detection. So during Autonomous, this back limelight here is used for coral uh, detection. Because we run a ground intake and drops can always be inconsistent, we like to use that so that we can always be able to get a consistent three coral. Um, Another thing that we uh, use is auto scoring. We run an auto align. However, we noticed in earlier competitions that it was very hard for the driver to gauge when we were actually aligned or not. And sometimes they would drop it early or not uh, hit it at all. So what we realized is by using the robot's po uh, pose estimation to drop it autonomously, that would get us a lot more consistency and um, make our and eliminate the driver error portion of auto align. Um, so for our vision, uh, we're running uh, two 3Gs in the front using Megatech 2. Last season, uh, we used a lot more Megatech 1, but uh, over the summer, we uh, kind of did a lot of research on Megatech 2, and we were really happy with um, the accuracy, especially at IRI. Um, so we decided to still use Megatech 1 to uh, estimate our gyro so that we can start in a lot more varied positions in Auton. But um, we decided to switch over to Megatech 2 and um, tally up once we have our gyro all settled. And then for our um, coral tracking, uh, the way we implement uh, driving towards the coral is we just have the drivetrain on a simple uh, backwards uh, robot relative loop. And then um, we then turn just towards the coral. So it's really simple, but it you know gets the job done. And yeah. Um, then for our auto line, uh, we noticed that we wanted a lot of different behaviors depending on how far and close we were to the uh, line spot that we calculate in our library. So then um, we decided to use three different uh, PID tunes, one for close, mid, and far away. So around two-ish meters plus, uh, 0.65 meters to two meters, and then 0.65 meters uh, to the uh, target pose, we would use different tunes. and that. Uh, basically allowed us to uh, skip the really annoying process of getting feet forwards, but also still uh, maintain really nice uh, behaviors and also accuracy with our really short time. Thank you so much to 1261 The Robot Lines for speaking to us about your robot once again. It seems like you guys have made a lot of improvements this, this season and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Good luck at the event and thank you for watching fun. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Kettering University's cutting edge programs and their experiential co op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands on, future focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.